Hello and welcome back. Okay, so in the last video, I disassembled a whole chunk of the build and built a new backplane PCB to put all of these modules back on. Well, it's missing from the build now, so what I want to do is pull everything else out and get that board in. This spare wire here is a cert for the ALU. We have to do that differently. There's a ground connection here. These are miscellaneous memory connections. Let's leave that there for now. Let's see address bus, power input, main bus, mem data, main bus at the other end. Now this is left and right hand side ALU inputs. So they're buses that go through the general purpose registers. Let's work out what these connections need to be. The address is in the same place. Okay, now left and right hand side, I've obviously put these on in the opposite order. Might need to look at a longer cable for that one. Those are our two assert lines that go over to the LCD. And this has a ground line that comes from this memory, but it needs power from somewhere. Best to come from here now. Now replacing these two breadboards with PCBs is a priority. But for now, we're going to have to uh, connect this in like this. It does fit quite nicely in there, though. But we we're going to use this as a power hub. So we don't want this cable anymore. I was quite pleased with this power cable when I first made it, but it did seem to uh, become a constraint on kind of reconfiguring the board layouts. So that's the main bus that goes off to the ALU. It's also used for the LCD. Okay, so that power can come straight from this distribution point. It's got ground anyway. Right, so power and ground for the memory bridge. I only need that temporarily. I can take it from one of these mini power connectors I added on the side here. Now we've got a large number of connectors here. I need to work out where they come from over here. I'm hoping that this little child board over here I can integrate that extra delay onto the updated version of bus control. Okay, so this is the reset line. Now we kind of daisy chain that on, but I'm wondering if that can reach directly now. I think making some uh, better length wires for these cross connections would be good, but I don't know, maybe we're going to replace these pretty soon with circuits that will fit over here better. Right, let's do these in the order we see them. So this is increment. That can definitely be a shorter wire than we've got. Okay, so then these three wires are address select. No question that this line can be a load shorter. It just goes to there. All right, I will definitely be doing a tidy up with uh, with these wires.
Okay, that's all the main control lines. Now we need to worry about where power is coming from. I want to take a look at this reset circuit at some point. I don't think what I did there was the best way to do it. Right, so we're going to get power here, here and here, but not over here yet. And we still got a control lines from for the ALU. That connector conveniently has power on it as well. And we do want this kind of star configuration for power and ground. And then we've got two load lines for the RCD. So we could just plug this one into ALU assert there, but this connector does have power and ground on it and we do need power and ground over here. So kind of a custom wire for that might make our life a lot easier. We also need power and ground on these two data signals over here. Right, so I'm going to make up a six wire cable that takes power and ground and the load and assert lines from device 14 and 15 and brings them up to here. And we can bring power back down to here temporarily. And we only need the load lines up here, but I do want to look at the assert lines to read back from the LCD at some point as well, just because this feels like a very temporary circuit and even though I described it as a temporary display, I'd kind of like to round out the process of integrating that. Okay, I've made my cable. So I've separated this out into power and ground and then I've got separate ones for the pair of load and the pair of assert. So that is load and assert on the orange and green lines. So orange line goes where the marked one is there. For the time being, these two are unused. The next PCB I want to do is going to be the memory bridge. Um, and that's this breadboard. And that's going to fit into this little space down here. So ideally, I want to be able to get memory across so I can slot it in. Definitely the right call to put lots of different power connections in. So there is a nice space for the memory bridge. I predict there isn't a chance in hell of this working first time. I would need to have made no mistake in any of this wiring or any of the soldering for the back plane or indeed the design for the back plane. So yeah, I almost want to kind of do this a little bit slower. Is it me or is that power a bit twinkly? And we've got the reset line is permanently low. Why would connecting ground up there cause that? There's no ground connection over here. Right, that looks like there's good stuff going on. So it could just be we're messed up with this cable. A lot of correct looking behavior from the register stack and the pipeline. So there is power and ground here next to the ALU assert line. Okay, so this is going to be a load TX of the address of display in it. And then that should be a call. Yes. So then it's going to be a move A, comma, 38 in hex. 
Right, so the call and return's working, the register operations are working. This is all a good sign. Oh, I do not think rights to the display are happening correctly. I've just consulted the circuit diagram for the PCB and it looks like I've got the least significant bit at the opposite end from what I expected there. Okay, I'm seeing some action there. This looks like everything being read from memory um, outside of the instruction stream is 255. Okay, so I plugged in my logic probe and I determined that it wasn't asserting on the memory bridge and I realized this cable was the wrong way around. So now see what happens. This is our screen reset. And of course, the first thing it should do is write Civ of Eratosthenes on the screen. S is correct. That should be an I, but these E's are correct. I think that could be something quite simple. This cable has always been problematic and I've been looking forward to getting rid of it. That looks promising. There you go, sieve of Eratosthenes. It looks like all the main stuff is working. Definitely got some dodgy cables here. Replacing this and all of its interconnects is the, uh, the next big job. Maybe that's not such a, a terrible thing. I would definitely benefit from making some shorter cables up here, but other than that, we've seen enough of this to see this is all working correctly. We haven't given the ALU a deep test, but um, it would have been firing a number of ALU commands just to get this working. So I think that's gonna be all right. I very much hope you found this interesting. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.